Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and in this video, we're going to talk about the defaults and the options for the Prototrack RMX control. I did a previous one just like this for the lathe. A lot of the things are the same, but I still want to make sure I cover everything, so bear with me. So here I am at the main screen, and on the left side, you'll see the defaults page. And this is a flyout window that has everything in here to set up the way that I want to do my machining most of the time. Okay, so starting at the top, you have the ability to change it from uh, inches per minute to inches per revolution. You have your ability to change it from RPM to uh, inches per tooth, okay? Um, you have the ability to change your PEC cycles from variable to fix to chip break. And every one of these works the same way. Touch the drop down menu, choose what you want to have, and then close it, okay? In my pockets and profile events, You'll notice that I have it set to always have one pass. If while I'm programming I want to have more passes, I still have the ability to change it. But if for some reason I was in an environment where I always was going to have three rough passes, then I'd change that to three and I don't have to put it in, in the program sequence. My finish cut is set for a default of five thousandths for every time that I make a part, and I can change that accordingly. The next thing under five is talking about the step over percentage for your pockets and your island events. And you'll notice in here that it's set at 70%, which is the standard default. 70% means that I can cut into a 90 degree corner and never leave any material standing. If I go more than 70%, there's a good chance that I will leave some material standing. But at the same time, if I was cutting really hard material like Inconel or something, 70% may be way too much, especially with a smaller cutter. So this is just what it's going to start with, and then I can adjust it later, okay? Um, you'll see in here that I have a step over percentage also for adaptive toolpath, but I don't have that turned on right now, which is why you see that it's gray. Okay. Um, in my face mill events, my step over percentage is also at 95% because most of the time there it's cutting all the way across the part so I can use almost the whole tool. And then my cutting method I can change from zigzag to one way. And so the older controls would only do a zigzag where they'd start at one end and go back and forth across the part till they got to the other end. With one way, it'll actually cut in one direction, lift up to 20 thousandths above the part, wrap it over, and every cut will be from the same direction, which is easier to control the way the chips fly and sometimes the way the finish looks. Okay, so now down here, um, I also can put a Z finish cut in here. If when I do face milling, I want to have a Z finish cut and have it take two passes, most of the time I don't need that. Um, under my pocket and island events, I have my cutting direction set up as always going counterclockwise, which means that I want to climb mill whenever I'm doing a pocket or an island. My Z entry mode I have set at helical, but again, I can change that to either ramp or to plunge depending on what I'm machining and where I'm breaking my entry point. Okay, my toolpath pattern is set on offset, but again, in here I have the ability to go to parallel or adaptive if I have that turned on. In this case, I don't still. And then my cutting method is in zigzag, or I can go to one way um, as well so that you know exactly how I want to set it. Each one of these is a drop down menu. And my Z finish cut, I have nothing in there, but if I wanted to have a floor finish cut, then I would put it in here and it would default to that. My entry mode here is, uh, my helical entry pitch is telling me that I'm using 40 thousandths, which means is for every full rotation of 360 degrees, it's gonna move 40 thousandths down in the Z axis. And again, it's adjustable, all right? And there I would just punch in whatever the number needs to be. Zigzag entry level is telling me when I zigzag into a part like so, the degree of angle that it uses as it comes into the part. And then my machining angle, normally I would be set where it just moves from X back and forth and then down in Z and back across in X. But I can actually change that angle to be anything if I actually needed to machine it at a certain angle. Okay, I have the ability to change whether or not my order of roughing passes happens in regions or in depth. And what that means is that if I set it for depth and I've got multiple places where it can't cut continuously, it's going to cut to the first depth in all those places, then the second depth in all those places, and so on and so forth. If I put it in regions and I have four roughing passes, it's gonna cut the one region, all four passes, and then the next region, all four passes. So it depends on which way I'm uh, machining and how I want to hold it and how stable the part is as to which way I want to use that. Okay, my rough link is one of the things that people struggle with understanding. It's set at two inches, but basically what your rough linkage is, is if I'm cutting somewhere and I have to pick up and move somewhere else, if it's under two inches, it's only going to move up to 20 thousandths above where it is, wrap it over, come back down and continue machining. 
If it's more than two inches, it's going to wrap it all the way out of the part, move over, come back down to that rapid point, and then start machining. So it's whichever way is faster and, and more uh, efficient for how you're machining, you can set it there. And I can change the length of what that link is, okay? My Z bottom finish, it also has a length length, so if I'm only doing the bottom, I might want to have that different than when I'm doing the roughing, okay? My minimum curvature radius is controlling how much in adaptive machining the smallest arc is that it can cut. So sometimes if my tool doesn't quite fit into something because that arc is set too high, by going to a smaller arc, it'll actually allow it to move in there and still use its adapting process, okay? So um, now I'm at the rough cut tolerance, and I have one both for uh, with a finish cut and without a finish cut. So what your rough cut tolerance is, is how much room that the control looks at between the size of your tool, the size of your finish cut, and the size of the area the tool has to go through. And so for instance, if I had 530 thousandths and I had a half inch end mill, okay, that only leaves me 30 thousandths, 15 per side. And if I had a 20 thousandths rough cut tolerance, they all wouldn't work together and it would tell you you can't cut it. So by being able to adjust this and bring it down smaller, I can still get that tool through an area without having to change to a smaller tool. In my subroutine and copy events, I can adjust my percentage of feed rate. So when I do a repeat and I want to say, uh, how fast do I want to run this compared to the original part? I'm saying 100% of the same speed, but I could adjust that if there's a reason to. My mirror direction is set on backward because most of the time my mirror is going to be an exact opposite. So that's going to make it run in the same direction. So if I'm climb milling the first part and I mirror it, going backwards automatically going to make it climb mill the second part as well. Okay. Uh, multiple fixtures. If I'm using multiple fixtures, I have it set at two, but as you know, you can run all the way up to six. And then my reference positions, these are my soft limits. Just like in the lathe, I set the boundaries that I don't want to exceed, and if for any reason I do exceed them, I'm going to get an error in the run mode. And of course, the difference is in the lathe, I only have four, but I have one for the Z also. And then this turns the limits on and turns them back off, okay? Go a little farther in here, my home position. If I want to have my tool change position be somewhere different than zero, zero, then I would put that in there and that would allow me to get the spindle off the top of the part maybe so I can make an easier tool change. I'm working in inches, but I can change that to metric by using this key here. And then in startup mode, it's saying, hey, when you turn it off and turn it back on, do I want to boot up in two axis or three axis mode? We have it set to three. My maximum feed rate is at full feed rate for the mill. Um, which is 250 unless you have electronic hand wheels. If you have electronic hand wheels, that would be 400. But if 400 is a little too fast for you, you could also tune it down by changing it in here. Okay. And then my accessory button is saying, hey, when I turn the accessories on, I want it to run the mist coolant, but I can also run flood coolant by either changing it in here or as you're going to see in a minute in my options. My tool compensation, I'm saying I climb mill almost all the time, so just put it on tool left. Okay, so that covers how your defaults work. So I'm going to close that flyout window. I'm going to go to the program mode and I'm just going to swipe forward. 